Hey, we all know about square roots, but now I want us to think about other roots and actually realize that we can actually think of a root in some funny way as an exponent. All right, so first of all, let's just begin with stuff that we know. Suppose I want to find uh, all the, the square roots of 25. Now, what does that mean? Well, if I want to find the square roots of 25, what I want to do is I want to find numbers, I'll call them x, which have the property that x squared will equal 25. That's what it means for x to be a square root of 25. So uh, are there any? Well, sure. 5 sort of stands out because 5 squared equals 25. There's actually another one, though. The other one is negative 5. Because if you take negative 5 and square it, you're going to actually get 25. So the square roots of 25, turns out that there are two of them. One is 5 and one is negative 5. Now we can actually extend these ideas to higher roots. Let's take a look at some. Let's find all the fifth roots of 32. So what does that mean? I'm looking for a number that has the property that when I multiply it by itself, or namely raise it to the fifth power, I'm actually going to get 32. So I'm looking for looking for x such that x to the fifth equals 32. I want them all. Well, can we think of any? Um, well, yeah, like 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So 2 to the fifth equals 32. So x equals 2 is an answer. Maybe x equals negative 2 is an answer, too. Is it? Well, no. Think about it. If I take negative 2 and raise it to the fifth power, then I'm multiplying negative 2 by itself an odd number of times. So what's the sign of that product? The sign of that product will be a negative. So the answer is negative 2 to the fifth would actually equal negative 32, which doesn't equal 32. So it turns out there's only one real fifth root of 32, and that turns out to be 2. So here's only one answer, namely 2. Let's try another one. All right, here we go. Let's find all the cube roots of negative 64. So that means I want to find all x such that x cubed equals negative 64. What must be the sign of x? Is it positive or negative? Well, when I multiply it by itself three times, it's going to be negative. That means the number itself has to be negative. A negative times a negative is a positive, times a negative again will give me a negative. So what could x possibly be? Well, negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, times negative 4 is negative 64. Anything else? No. It's only one cube, real cube root of negative 64. Cool. Let's try one more. Let's find all the fourth roots of negative 625. So here I want to find, calling all x such that x to the fourth equals negative 625. What real number satisfies that? Well, think about it. Suppose you have a number in your head, mm, x. I multiply it by itself again and again. Whether x is positive or negative, what about x times x? It will definitely be positive. Because if they're both positive, then the product is positive. If they're both negative, the product is positive again. So this is going to always be greater than or equal to 0. How could it ever equal negative 625? It can't. So if we are looking for an even root of a, uh, of a negative number, we see there are no real solutions to that. In the previous example, when we're looking for the cube root, that was an odd root. We can actually have 
odd roots of negative numbers. That's completely fine, but we can't have even roots of negative numbers. There are no real numbers that will actually satisfy that. So here, the answer is uh, find all x. There are no x. There are new real x. So that's maybe sort of sad. Maybe puts a tear to your eye. But the point is, that's the truth. So you've got to be careful with roots. We can't take an even root of a negative number.